Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Callie. So today I'm going to be going over my top 19 books of 2019. I have read a fair amount of books this year. Um, I think as of right now, I'm at like 145-ish books, give or take. Um, with this list, however, I am cutting it off at the end of November since we do a lot of pre-filming and all of that. So these are going to be books from January to November that I just fell in love with. These are in a specific order of how I liked them, but I did love every single one of these books. So because there are 19 of them, I'm not going to go super into detail. I'm mainly going to go into why I enjoyed them. A lot of, a couple of them are sequels, finales, so obviously I can't go into a ton of detail, but I'm gonna get started. So the first book on my list is Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. This is a standalone novel and it was so different from any kind of fantasy I've ever read. A, it was a standalone and that's just weird in and of itself. This girl saw visions of their four queens being murdered in the future and she has to try and figure out who's doing it before these queens all get murdered. It's so interesting. It goes back and forth a lot. We get to see the queen's perspectives. We get to know like, we even get the villain's perspective at one point. It was just so well done. It was so well plotted. It was a mystery. It was a fantasy. It was just so many things jam packed into one not terribly long novel. And it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I plan on rereading this. The next one on my list is one of the very few mermaid books I read this year. Big surprise surprise there. And that is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Um, this is an adult book and it's a horror novel about mermaids. So it's quite entertaining. Murderous mermaids and it was glorious. It was what I really loved about this as someone who has a science degree there was so much science in this that were explaining how just how these mermaids can live, why they live in I believe it's the Morena Trench which is the deepest trench in the entire world, how they thrive there, how they live there, what they could eat, what they possibly like, how they survive, how they've evolved, why they use song, how they communicate. There was just so much science behind it. And it was, I almost believed it. It was so realistic. And that's one of the reasons why this made this list. Coming in at number 17, I have Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi adventure that follows a girl who has basically been in stasis for 200 years and then is rescued by this ragtag team at the Aurora Academy and they go on adventure mainly because she's being hunted now because she was in stasis for 200 years which is super unheard of in this and she's trying to figure out what's happened in the past 200 years where her family went if she has any family left she's just whole buckets are confused one of the things I really loved about this is there are six crew members, but this story, it was more of a narrative than their previous sci-fi series, which they wove the story so seamlessly that even though I was changing perspectives, I felt like I was just watching a movie. Number 16 is Defy Me by Tahara Mafi. I have the special dust jacket. This is the fifth book in the Shatter Me series. I started reading the Shatter Me series earlier this year. I started in January and this book blew me away. The entire series, I was really interested. The first three were the original trilogy and they were a bit tropey. They were, they were still really fun and really interesting. We follow Juliet who's a superpower. She's basically rogue from X-Men. She touches people and they die. So when we pick up her story, she has been in confinement for like almost two years and hasn't touched an, a human being, had contact with another human being during that time. She is broken out by the government to be used as a weapon. And Juliet, so we just sort of follow this story and it's so enticing. There's a really big romance plot, which sometimes I don't care for, but I really love this romance plot. And it's just getting better and better. And honestly, it feels like it's getting more and more adult. I just really love this story. The finale comes out in, I believe, April of 2020. So I'm really excited to see where Juliet's story ends. And if that one's gonna surpass 
the fifth book because so far fifth book's my favorite so the next book is actually the first contemporary and that is eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia i read this at the bequest of Brittany. she couldn't stop talking about it i had a copy i was in the mood for a contemporary and this book blew me away we follow eliza who is this girl who basically writes and draws this really popular web comic and she does it anonymously and her secret gets let out her whole life just kind of out the window so it's kind of her picking up those pieces dealing with that and it was just a beautiful beautiful story i just can't get over this book made me tear up it was very emotional. It was just, I love the writing style. It was so lyrical. And there were even like drawings in it from her stories. There were text messages. It felt very real. And I loved that aspect in a contemporary. It was well done. The characters were wonderful. And they ha they developed so beautifully. And I just, it was great. I enjoyed this book a lot. The next book that uh, is coming up on the list is Cress by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles series. I picked up the Lunar Chronicles because Sarah told me that I would really enjoy it. It's a fairy tale. It is a sci-fi fairy tale retelling of a bunch of different stories. We have Cinderella, we have this one focuses on Rapunzel, and we also have uh, Snow White, we have Little Red Riding Hood, and they weave in together as each book progresses. For me, Cress is very much like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Not with like the Triwizard Tournament or anything like that, but if you think about it, the fourth book is really when the plot of the story shoots up. And that's how I feel with Cress. I love the first two books, Cinder and Scarlet, but to me those felt like introduction books. This one is where we really got into what is happening, what the problem is, and how our group is going to figure out that problem. So that's that's usually where I fell in, fall in love with the story. Um, I am very plot driven when it comes to fantasies. Now they had this wonderful story and I was just along for the ride on the Rampion. Uh, so the next book on my list is actually a poetry collection, which I've never really been big into poetry, but this series makes me want to get into poetry. And that is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is a poetry collection all about women empowerment and feminism. It deals with a lot of issues. She has like the whole first page of trigger warnings. So please be sure to read that. But it is, it's a story about kind of her life written in poetry. And there, these, some of them are, you can't tell because of the glare. Some of them are really short while others are a couple pages long. And it's basically kind of follows a story where the princess, no one comes to rescue the princess in the tower. She has to do it herself and how she does that. All of these collections are beautiful. This one is by far my favorite. I think it has the most powerful poems. The next book on my list is East by Edith Patu. This, this is written almost kind of like poetry. They're written from a couple different perspectives of a girl named Rose who tries to save her family by going running off with a white bear who just talks to her. It sounds really weird, but it's beautiful. It is sort of, it's a retelling of a Norse tale called The Girl and the Bear, which is a Norse telling of Beauty and the Beast. Um, but there's other elements in there that isn't in the Beauty and the Beast story. The thing that I love about this book was the writing style. This one was a bit more character driven than plot driven, but the the writing style was beautiful and the prose was so poetic and I just couldn't put it down because of I just needed to know more of Rose's story and I needed to see what was going on with Rose and the white bear and her brother and the troll queen and just so many other elements in this story that were just beautiful and I just can't give this book praise enough. The next book on the list is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I love V.E. Schwab's. Her stories are so in-depth and so complex that I love it. This is a very X origin story of X-Men kind of vibe where these two guys try and figure out how to give themselves superpowers and then 10 years later 
are mortal enemies and we follow both timelines as to how they became mortal enemies and what they're doing now to basically kill each other. It was great. This duology, which actually I think is more than a duology at this point, is just fantastic. The characters are wonderful. The writing is wonderful. The story is just mind-blowing and it's amazing. So the next book I actually don't have on my person right now and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I love this series. This was the first adult series by V.E. Schwab I picked up. I just, this is where I really fell in love with her writing and her story. This is a very complex story. There's parallel worlds, there's magic, there's different types of magic, there's world walking, and there's there's a monarchy, there's bad people, there's magic drainers, there's this evil black force that that's a thing. It is all just so complex. It's always hard for me to describe, but I love this series so much. I just love how magical and wonderful. The second book has like this Triwizard Tournament of magicians and it's wonderful. The conclusion was perfect. I just love this whole series. The next book on my list is actually one I just finished um, and that is Supernova by Marissa Meyer. This is the epic conclusion to the Renegade series that I started earlier this year for our book club and I've been patiently, patiently waiting for Supernova to come out and it blew me out of the water. It took everything that Marissa had built up from books one and two and she tied up every single loose end. She addressed literally everything. Everything that I could have ever wanted. She did leave the ending a little open. I won't say, obviously I won't spoil anything, but this is another kind of superhero. It is a superhero book. Superheroes are sort of a, a norm, but we. the one thing that I love about this series and even continuing on in this book is the teetering between what is good and what is evil. And I think that that says something about Marissa's writing is she, I didn't automatically know who the bad guy was. And I love that. I love when everyone has that gray, that moral gray character and every character was like that in this book and I thought that was so perfect and so wonderful and honestly so realistic not every in the real world people aren't just perfect little goody two-shoes that everyone's a little morally gray and I think that that added another layer of depth to this series and it just continued into this perfect conclusion that I am still just reeling about. So the next book is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. There was some, there's still so much hype about this series. I was nervous that it wasn't going to live up to it for me and pff, boy did, was I wrong. This lived up to all the hype. I am so in love with this story. I am so in love with Leia, with Elias, with Helene. Every single character I just love. Fellow Leia who is a slave who is trying to infiltrate this evil regime. It's a very typical YA story, but it, the, I think this one, the characters. This is a very plot and character driven story and they're, everything about it's perfect and I love it. I just, mm. This book is so wonderful. I am reading Torch Against the Night and and the next book is another book that I actually don't have. I am lending this one out to Brittany and that is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I read this book part of Owl crate -a -thon in the summer. This is a Mulan meets Project Runway story. The Mulan aspect really intrigued me. The Project One Runway, never actually seen the show, kind of didn't care. But this story was so beautiful. It's a girl who is, or Mulan, pretends to be a man so that she can become the master tailor for the king or the emperor. And in order to succeed, she has to complete three tasks. She has to make three dresses, one out of the blood of the stars, the laughter of the sun and the tears of the moon. And she has to go and find that thread. And we go on this just epic adventure of her trying to find these tangible things that shouldn't be tangible. And it's so wonderful. I love our main character. I love our love interest and our magician. All of these are just so great. I am so excited for Unravel the Dusk, which comes out next summer. This book just got darker and darker and darker. And that's one of the things I love about books, these kinds of books, is when they don't have that cookie cutter happy ending. Yes, I love a happy ending as much as the next person, but I really, really like it when a character takes a darker path 
and we followed that path instead. So this book did exactly that and I'm really excited because the next book should be really really dark and I live for dark stories. Which is a perfect transition to the next book that I'm in love with and that is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This book is hella dark. Super dark. We follow actually two completely different timelines. We follow Riel who is thought to be this wonderful sun queen and has to do these trials to prove that she's the Sun Queen. And then a thousand years later, we follow Eliana, who is basically an assassin trying to run for her life. And the whole Sun Queen thing is this whole big myth and legend, and it somehow starts to seep into her world. I love Riel so much. She is my just new favorite, just morally gray character that there ever was. And Eliana is just the stereotypical I'm stubborn assassin. Very reminiscent of Selena from Throne of Glass. And I love Throne of Glass. So I love Eliana. This book was just so awesome. I am so excited for book three. So now I'm entering kind of my top five. These ones were really hard for me to sort. So these ones are all kind of tied for first place. I loved each and every one of these books so much, um, but they each had something different. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi adventure written in like files. It's not written as a normal narrative, which made me really nervous to read it, but this was our May book of the month and I just fell in love with this story. It was so well done. It was Contagion meets iRobot. We have a crazy AI. We have this weird space disease happening. And then we have this couple who has to work together and they had just broken up the day before. So there's so much tension and it was so, I didn't think it was gonna be able to be shown through these files, text messages, surveillance videos, but they were shown so well. You got a real feel for these characters, even though you're not seeing them in a normal narrative. So it was a beautifully written story. Each one had a different perspective, which was just straight, just strictly amazing and perfect. I am just, the, just the conspiracy and everything happening in this series was perfect. The next book um, is the more romance-driven novel that I fell in love with, and that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Muharin. This is a witch tale of a haters to lovers kind of story. It is a haters to lovers story. So a witch has to get married to a witch hunter who doesn't know that she is a witch, and that causes some issues. So Lou is just that perfect, sassy, kind of woman in this very medieval era and Reed is her new husband who's a witch hunter trying to make her act like a lady and she's just like nope I'm gonna just make your life so difficult but the way the reason I love this book so much is how their relationship progresses it wasn't insta love it wasn't the typical hater enemies to lovers kind of story it was enemies to friend or to like acquaintances to acquaintances to friends and friends to lovers we get that progression it didn't feel forced it didn't feel instant it was just a perfect romantic tale and I am really excited for the sequel because I just need more Lou and Reed in my life because they're adorable and perfect so the next book that I'm going to talk about I actually read really early on in the year and that is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. Sarah and I actually met Trisha Levenseller and Alexandra Cristo when they came to tour in the Midwest one of the things that she said inspired this story was she wanted to write a story about Gamli's axe and thus this story was born. So basically Resmira, who is our main character, um, is kicked out of her town and sent to kill a god. And if she doesn't kill a god, she can't come home. And usually these people who go on these trials, they fail and die out in the wild, which has these really creepy like Valkyrie type monsters who eat you. You have to have an axe in order to access any kind of food or water because everything is so hard and rough. You just need that power of an axe. In this story, it's a standalone and it's a shorter story, but it is jam packed full of sass and action, which are my two favorite things in any fantasy or just kind of any novel, to be honest. 
and it was perfect. The, everything about this was amazing. I plan on rereading it before her next book comes out, which isn't a sequel, it's a whole other book. I love her writing. It was fun. The banter was perfect and just everything about this book makes me happy. Plus my name's in it and that's pretty cool. So the only other contemporary, which isn't really a contemporary on this list is a historical fiction. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am not big into historical, f I mean, I like historical fiction, but not 1960s, 70s rock and roll era kind of fiction, more like Renaissance medieval times historical fiction. But this book took me by surprise. It was so great. I kept forgetting that this band wasn't real. So we followed this band in an interview format called Daisy Jones and the Six. In 1979, they break up for just a mysterious reason and they are finally revealing that now to this interviewer. So we get all of these band members and Daisy and it's just such a wonderful story. You get kind of modern and past perspectives and it's just such a fun story. I keep wanting to like listen to the album when it doesn't exist, which is just aggravating. So I would definitely highly recommend this if you're into historical fiction. And the last book on my list is of course Beauty and the Beast retelling, but probably one of the best Beauty and the Beast retellings I've ever read, and that is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmer. This follows a, a prince who is beast-y um, and has to relive his 18th birthday season so the entire season of fall over and over until he falls in love but the thing is, is he doesn't pick a girl from a village he picks girls from our world so he plucks harper out of washington dc as she's walking down the road and she is plopped into this weird magical area having no idea what's happening and the story goes on from there it's so great it is just so magical and mystical. Harper is phenomenal. Ren is just that broody prince. And then we have Grey, who is his, basically he's a mix of like Lumiere and Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. He's that person and he's just there for the sass and the memes and it's great. I am so excited for this sequel. This was such a fun book. This is, this has a hold on my heart just like um, A Court of Mist and Fury and A Throne of Glass and it's just, it's wonderful and perfect. So those are my top 19 books of this year. Um, like I said, I read a lot, um, but these are the books that stood out the most to me. I, I read mainly fantasy in case you couldn't tell. There were two books on this list that weren't fantasy. Oops but I love it. So feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Right now we are posting videos every single day until Christmas Eve, and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye!